All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, let's do something a little different, kind of go back, take a step back, and do a little intro, a little overview of what is crypto mining, a step-by-step -step guide. I found this article today in my inbox by Umesh Kumar, and we're going to see if Umesh Kumar can lay out exactly what is crypto mining, a step-by-step -step guide. Mainly, my intention is you go through this stuff, you start learning, you learn and learn, and then you um, realize that you don't know everything. You're always learning. You're like a pilot. You're always learning. Like a doctor, you're always practicing, right? Uh, ha, ha. Um, but you sometimes assume people know everything about crypto. They don't. There's only a small, small, small percentage of people actually crypto mining. Sure, you got the big factory corporate guys with warehouses and server rooms and all that stuff chewing up electricity from volcanoes uh, but there's guys like me with 1.2 giga hash woohoo it's better than nothing i'm still in debt from it i have not got my roi but again what is crypto mining let's just revisit this we'll zip through this article and we'll add my two cents as needed if i have any because again i do not claim to know everything i know enough to actually mine crypto, that's it. I don't know all the ins and outs, but it actually is working for me. So I can talk a little bit to it. So what is crypto mining? Crypto mining is the act of verifying transactions within cryptocurrency networks or peer-to-peer -peer networks. Uh, look at the blockchain. You can also Google blockchain to understand the peer-to-peer -peer networks, basically to make the blockchain secure. And that's the beauty of it. You're securing it, a chain of custody, in the blockchain cryptocurrency world. Uh, you're maintaining records of each transaction. Uh, you're solving blockchain related puzzles to release new currency. Other than Bitcoin, many different cryptocurrency also use the same underlying technology, but with various algorithms for operating their networks. The most famous example is Ethereum. Okay, algorithms. Each coin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, uh, all have their own algorithms. So they're paired up. So even though it's Ethereum, you are mining the algorithm ETHASH, E-T-H-A-S-H. -H. For Litecoin and Dogecoin, they both use the same algorithm called Script, S-C-R-Y-P-T. So that's how that works. Each coin has its own algorithm. So if you get into mining and you're mining on Windows per se, there you will pick a mining software, which is free. You pay a dev fee as you mine. That's another story, um, but it's only 1%. You know, when you set up your miner like a T-Rex miner, an NB miner, LLL miner, all this stuff, in the line, you specify the algorithm you want to mine. And when you go to pick your coin, they help you with all this stuff. They pretty much tell you how to set it up. It's just a matter of finding the information. So for, for Ethereum, it's ETHash. And that's what the algorithm is. It's telling the software what to be looking for when it's mining and you're pointing to a mining pool as well. The mining pool is where you go to get the blocks on which to solve these puzzles and get rewarded for solving them. And that's it. That's, I know it's a lot, but that's pretty much it. Each coin has its own algorithm and it's all based on blockchain, Google blockchain. Think of blockchain as a set of linked lists, you know, and each one is, has a previous pointer back to its previous, block of information and if you ever break that chain of linked list then you know that's that's not a valid transaction something happened either it was a you know man in the middle attack so it's just not good so with blockchain you have a chain of custody making the whole transaction secure always validated by many peer to peers in the network I call it a p to, oh my ppn is it? i think it is peer to peer network <clears throat> and it's basically says, is this transaction valid? And uh, you need, need this many uh, approvals, uh, networks to approve it. And then it becomes, hey, this is a valid transaction. Pretty much that in a nutshell. A linked list, and each node in that list contains the information on the transaction. All right, let's go. Blockchain is a revolution in technology that can impact every industry. True. But for this blog post, we will focus on its implications for crypto mining. Cryptocurrency is a digital currency that relies on cryptography to generate new currency units and verify transactions. Cryptography is the art of writing and solving codes. Crypto miners create new units of cryptocurrency by completing compu computationally intensive puzzles. If you'd like to learn how to mine cryptocurrency, you just keep on reading. That's why we're here. All right, what is crypto mining? Crypto mining is the process in which a person can generate cryptocurrency by using their computer to solve mathematical puzzles. 
the process is called mining proof of work because the computer solves these puzzles or hashes to find a block that you can add to the blockchain. In return for solving the puzzle, the miner receives a reward of whatever Bitcoin or whatever coin you're mining. You can actually mine Ethereum and get paid in Bitcoin. Multiple possibilities. Most people just mine Ethereum right now and get paid in Ethereum. I mine Ethereum sometimes to get paid out in Bitcoin. Uh, it's Options are pretty much out there. Uh, the number of Bitcoins rewarded depends on how much computing power they use compared to others. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, again, they're, they're focused on Bitcoins here, but you can mine Ethereum, you can mine um, Dogecoin, uh, Raptorium. There's all these coins out there, and you can buy you know, different ways to mine. It uses resource-intensive computing power to verify uh, blockchain transactions using their computers and GPUs, which are video cards. GPUs are graphical processing units. Those are those video cards people buy for their gaming computers and for doing highly intense graphics. So GPU, whenever your GPU think it's graphics cards, they run from 500 up to 2000 bucks. That's where your money is going to be spent on graphics cards. Miners solve cryptographic problems, a very, a very difficulty to receive new coins as a reward for their work. Proof of work. Think of proof of work and mining as the same to me. That is the way I look at it. I could be wrong, but that's the way I look at it. Proof of work, work, you're working, you're burning electricity. Your cards are running to solve problems, you're working, and then you get rewarded in the coin of your choice, mostly the coin you're mining, you get paid out in. And then you put that in your wallet, and that becomes a tax transaction, and then you can either hold that coin and hope the Ethereum or Bitcoin or whatever you're mining doubles, <laughs> and you make more money, or you can just cash out and help pay for the equipment you purchased. So think of it as a business. You're generating product, you're making revenue by getting paid out rewards to hopefully pay for the equipment you purchased uh, yeah, to get up in mining. So your ROI, your return on investment is key. You want to have graphics cards that are going to hopefully give you a couple bucks and help pay for all this stuff. My goal, personally, my strategy <clears throat> is to just mine coins, stack. I call it stack coins, stack, stack, stack. I just want to get a bunch of coins because right now things are low. Bitcoin right now as of 14 March 2022 is 38,900. Ethereum is 2571. This site is very useful. It's called coin360.com. Bookmark it. It's very useful for you people interested in uh, cryptocurrency in general. Mining, trading, whatever. Mark that site. All right, let's keep going. Select the mining approach. You can choose three mining approaches. Pool, clout, solo. You need to select one which you can quickly get. Pool mining is a way to share the mining power of your machine with other miners. That's what I do. This reduces your chances of getting rewards since you share that work with others, but increases the number of coins mined. Solo mining means that you are mining by yourself without joining a pool to mine coins. One would typically only do this if they have a compelling computer or e, uh, eGPU rig. Cloud mining is when you rent out someone else's hardware to mine coins for you. i never done cloud mining. I tried solo mining, but again, you can sit there in the desert of crypto mining and never hit any blocks. And there's a luck ratio with that too. So you could basically sit there for months and not hit any blocks and not make anything. Whereas pool mining, you can point your uh, GPUs at a mining pool for whatever coin you're going after, like Ethereum. And that pool is ethermine.org, you can check it out. And you, you know you can probably make whatever, a couple bucks a day based on your setup, how many gigs you have how many giga hash you have or whatever mega hash you are based on all the GPUs out there. So each GPU can process a mount and give you a certain mega hash on the coin you are processing. That mega hash kind of equates to how many dollars, you know, they, they pretty much you know map it to USD fiat money. So if you're mining, I don't know, 80, uh, let's take a basic card. Let's say a 6600 XT AMD, you are mining at 32 mega hash. So you could probably make one to two bucks a day mining Ethereum on that. And that's the USD value, but you're getting paid. You're accumulating Ethereum as reward. And when you reach a certain level on the mining pool, that gets paid out to you. And you can set that threshold. I like setting it higher to get minimal payouts to keep my my uh, transaction reporting liability down. So I only have to report a few transactions a month or a year 
just for tax reporting purposes. If you're getting a low payout, you're getting all these transactions. And those become, I guess, right now, as of, as of this video, taxable events. There is a lawsuit which the people won, and now they're pushing it further, where if you're staking, the IRS thought it was a taxable event. They were taxed on what they staked. They didn't sell it, just on what they staked. And then the judge ruled that that was creating an object that could be a taxable event. It was not the taxable event per se. It was you're creating something new. And then that object will then be taxed if you sell it. So that is a landmark thing that happened. And they're pushing it for everybody. These God bless these people that went after the IRS to, to you know, educate them. And um, they backed down. They were going to get refund all the money. The people, people said, no, we want everyone to benefit from this. And now that may roll over into mining. Because mining, you're getting paid this reward. You're creating something. And then whether you sell it, if you do, that to me would be the task. task tax transaction versus just receiving something as a reward. I don't know. It's still in the fuzzy thing. Uh, always talk to a CPA that kind of knows how to spell crypto because some guys have no clue. Uh, right now, my CPA basically makes me generate the tax reporting form for the IRS and give it to him. So he's not doing any work at all. So don't think your CPA is going to help you with this crap because they know there's thousands of transactions possibly on crypto. So beware of that. There's a, a workload of uh, transactions involved when you're doing mining and on anything crypto. When you're exchanging or you're buying, if you buy crypto, no big deal, fiat to Bitcoin or whatever. And then if you swap Bitcoin, you can exchange Bitcoin to get Ethereum. That's a, tra a tax transaction. And of course, if you sell any of crypto back to fiat, that's a ta tax transaction, like a stock, like an equity. Uh, now, mining and staking, that's the one that is... Uh, is the one that had the court decision and they're still working that out. But right now I report it as income. If I mine, if I mine a thousand bucks of Ethereum and I'm getting paid in Ethereum, the uh, share, the fair market value on what I received on that date to my wallet from the mining pool is the fair market value that is treated as income. That is what I understand as of today. But again, I'm doing all the work getting this stuff ready for my CPA. He's just going to glue it together. You know, put it in the form, my package to send out the IRS, and they'll use the money to give the people that don't deserve it. So there you go. Welcome to the taxation. Yeah, people that work are the ones penalized. <clears throat> yeah, go figure. All right, enough of that. That's another. That's another video. <laughs> okay. Crypto wallets. If you want to mine ether, you'll need an Ethereum wallet. Once you open a wallet, you'll have a public key that you can use during the mining configuration process. For instance, if you join a mining pool, once your miner is set up with the pool's URL and port number for its worker's name, then all your rigs will perform hashing power on demand for that specific pool. This is what I was talking about. For me, it's Ethermine. And what I do, you set up in your command line, I pick a miner, let's just say T-Rex. I use T-Rex, it's a, it's a open source package of software you download. You, you basically pay a 1% dev fee as your mine is taken out, and that's well worth it. You're helping the developers grow the product of their miner, which will benefit you, so it's a win-win. You set up the miner. You, you have a wallet address. It's this long, long code. I'll show you right here. This is Ethermine. This is a mining pool, ethermine.org. This is what I am using as a public mining pool to mine Ethereum. This number up here, right here where my mouse is, is your not your, this is my specific wallet address for Ethereum. When I meet my payout level, when I reach a certain threshold of Ethereum, I will get paid out that reward I've earned to my wallet. And once it's in my wallet, that's a taxable event. And then for me, I put it in another place where I actually get interest on the Ethereum I mine. So it's a win, 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 passive income all the way to the, to the goal, you know what I mean? Uh, mining, say I make a thousand bucks of Ethereum, boom, I put that in my wallet. In the wallet I have, I get paid monthly interest about 6% or so on that money I mine. So it's great. That's why I hold and then I make the passive income. So there's a great whole use case ecosystem to this crypto if you do it right. You can create it and then you can actually get interest of it, interest on it. I mean, do you mine it or do you just go buy it? There's the thing you got to deal with. Do I invest money in buying hardware? 10,000 bucks to buy a bunch of GPUs and motherboards and crap and heating control and vents and tents and stuff. 
Or do I just go take that 10K and buy dollar cost average in and buy Ethereum or a Bitcoin? That's the thing you got to deal with. You want to put up with the, the, the work of mining? Or do you just want to buy the stuff directly? You got to think that out. What do you, what's best for you? Some people that aren't into the hobby or into the hardware or want to do this stuff, just buy it. Just buy the coin and dollar cost average in. If you had 10,000 bucks, 500 bucks a week or 500 bucks every two weeks, dollar cost average in you know to get the uh, peaks and valleys and average out your investment that's that's a that's basically how some people suggest with any stock any crypto just dollar cost average in that way you're not dropping it all at once and then the market tanks and you're like oh my god i'm down 50 percent so for example i bought nvidia stock oh it's going to go up i bought it at 300 it's now trading at 225 <laughs> see see how it works all right guys um so you get your wallet you can go anywhere. There are things called Exodus, BlockFi, Voyager, Coinbase. Those are um, the latter ones are exchanges kind kind of. You can you know your money is out there. It could be hacked or taken. You can also call it, get a desktop wallet, which is Exodus or something, and that's uh, something you can download. It's on your desktop. And there's also a thing called a hard wallet. It's like a USB stick, but you can actually send your crypto to this little hard wallet. It's a little device, like I said, like a thumb drive. Uh, memory stick and you put that in a safe and that's your actual money but when it's in there you're not making any money on it you're making interest so it's a risk reward thing how safe or how paranoid are you about your crypto uh, yeah lots of lots of topics man I'm trying to try not to go too deep on that stuff we're already 16 minutes in I'm sorry yeah get your reward let's keep going yeah we're almost done here you can start passively collecting either ether once you've established your mining operation and created a wallet yeah you get your wallet you get your mining software, you download on your Windows, you set up your wallet, you point to that mining pool like Ethermine like I showed you, and you just start the mining software and boom, you should start getting uh, crypto. Whether based on how much uh, GPU processing power you have, computer cards, graphics cards, I mean, and uh, yeah, you start accumulating your rewards and then you eventually hit your payout level and it goes to your wallet. If you're part of a mining pool, you'll get paid in periodic payments based on your group's block solving success. Users can access web dashboards, which I just showed you, for most mining pools to evaluate mining results, such as efficiency and yield. I use it also to, my, uh, to monitor if any of my rigs have gone down through various reasons, network issues or the memory card had a, um, the graphics card had a memory issue, which will sometimes cause windows to just seize and then you just got to reboot the uh, mining rig which is basically a motherboard running windows with a bunch of gpus hooked off it final words let's see if you are interested in crypto mining it is essential to understand the steps needed to get started to have a better chance of success you can take help from this guy the software will help you in mining crypto what is that i never heard of it uh you'll need a lot of time and money um yeah because if you're new to it, if you're not software specific or hardware specific, you just got to learn how to install Windows onto a SATA drive or you use a USB drive to install Linux and run Hive OS, NiceHash. Those are those are um, crypto mining monitoring software pa uh, applications that run on the web. You get a dashboard and everything, and they configure everything for you in a way you just got to set things up basically in you're good to go, but you're paying a fee. With everything comes a fee. So you'll learn that you're paying for power. You're trying to get rid of the heat out of your room. Uh, everything adds up. Fees, 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 fees. So if you can cut fees out where you don't have to, I suggest just doing the Windows approach. Learn how it all works with the mining software. Uh, and do it by hand. Learn you get the blue screens from Windows. Why did a blue screen? Google out, Google or check my videos. I have a lot of that because, again, I made all these errors where I didn't set the uh, virtual memory right on Windows. Little stupid stuff like that will cause Windows to go Bill Gates mode, blue screen, which seems to be the uh, standard with Windows. Uh, crypto mining is about converting electricity into financial gain. The article provided a step to Google guide on how to get started, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah, you're going to use a lot of power. Say you make, I'm just going to say, say you have a $300 power bill. It's going to double if you have one giga hash. Of, uh, that's about, I, I'm going to say 23 GPUs. I can't remember how many I have. But uh, yeah, so you're going to be running power. It's like any, it's almost a business. So you have expenses, you have the cost of equipment, 
The power is your expense, your time, uh, learning. Uh, yeah. And then you get rewards, but your ROI, your return on investment, you got to figure that out. I mean, don't buy more than you're willing to lose. Worst cases, you can always sell your graphics cards on eBay or something and recoup some of your money if you just don't want to do this anymore. Uh, yeah. Things to think of. I mean, it is a little baby business. I did not get LLC or incorporate or anything. What I did is I created a profit and loss statement for all the equipment I purchased, my power usage, and the actual fair market value of the coins generated in 2021 and put that in a profit and loss statement as a sole proprietor for my taxes. And I'm going to see if that's going to benefit me. So, you know what I mean? Because that is a business expense. I, I dropped a lot of money to buy some of this crap. And mostly some of it was at the peak of getting cards. And we'll make another video. If you're having trouble getting graphics cards at, at MSRP, try not to buy above MSRP. Don't spend, look around at what things should cost. And if you're buying like a 6600 XT for more than 500 bucks, you're really getting into the higher prices. Sometimes you'll find a nice 6600 XT for under 500 bucks. I like those cards because you can get 32 mega hash on Ethereum and the power usage is only 70 watts and under. So you're not chewing a lot of power and you're not generating a lot of heat. I like those cards. Yeah. Yeah, so you got to think about that. Your rate, your return on investment and stuff like that. Um, that's it. That is pretty much it. Again, search around. It's If you're interested in it, start small. If you got a gaming PC, use the graphics card in that. Uh, you most likely have an NVIDIA or an AMD graphics card. You can always check looking on your case or something if you have if you bought one of course if you know how to build one you can build i'm going to re, i'm going to encourage everybody you can build your own rig it's a motherboard it's some memory it's a memory stick it's a cpu and a power supply these are all plug and play things you pop in and installing windows onto a drive and it's not that hard it is really not there are little lessons out there and i even have one how to do it once you do it it's like, you're good. You know, you got it. And then that's why I make videos just to document everything. You can do it. I'm just encouraging people to try it. Start small. You can even CPU mine if you want to buy graphics cards. That's where you use the CPU power, the processing power of your CPU to mine certain coins. Only certain coins can do that. And for me, the one of the, I'll give you a tip. Uh, one is a Ryzen 9 3900X CPU, which you can mine, say, Raptorium, which is an altcoin. Uh, pennies, it's, it's changed trading at pennies but the goal and the hopium is it's gonna go up to a buck and then you you paid for everything you see how that works it's kind of hopium you're speculating whereas if you're mining ethereum it's kind of like a staple right now you're getting money each month to pay your bills or just stack coins so that's it man hope this helps 23 minutes in guy i'm sorry it's so long but i want to add my my experience to it i am no way an expert or genius of this i mean i proofs in the pudding i've been making some money on this stuff, but I'm holding the coins and having gone through my taxes. Oh dear God, you realize, oh, I made this much in interest. I made this much in rewards and staking, and I made this much in mining. So there you go. It is doable. If you're into hardware and you want to play with the computer, jump into it, start small and go from there. I mean, if you don't want to do it, maybe just invest directly in the coin. Cause I think, I don't know. I think this is here to stay barring any crazy, crazy, draconian authoritarian governments um yeah even in canada we learned they couldn't stop crypto you know the wallets they, they went they went total tyrant mode in canada um and tried to seize freeze people's money which is very very wrong very scary and uh, that is why you want crypto man you can just move it around and they can't touch it whereas if you're in a bank everything you work for in your whole life can just be frozen at with no due process that is a scary scary thought um so there you go Go forth, do great things. If anything, I hope this helps. If people are just new to it, OGs who've done this for a while, yeah, this is boring. Don't watch. Don't waste your time watching the video. I'm sorry, but I'm sure you got that right away. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Any questions, post them below or go to my Discord. I put out there new GPU uh, listings that come out. I have a little bot running that scrapes for new available items that are hard to find. You can find that in my Discord and you can find uh, my overclock settings for GPUs my hardware setups, other people's rigs, photos, and questions and answers. Uh, useful resource. Use it as you will. There's information out there. The community is awesome. Everyone is willing to help everyone else succeed. 
that is the goal. This is a great community for that. All right, thank you guys. I'm out. Take care. Bye. Ramo.